Jason, as it is each and every week, the Lee Summit Town Hall podcast is brought to the good people by Budget Blinds of Lee Summit. Budget Blinds! Remember, Jason, automated shades, that is the future. All hail our robot shade overloads. You know what I'm going to go is Halloween this year? What? I'm going to go with some automated shades. Wow. You're not, I feel like that could be a little tricky. It's true, but we're going we're gonna to give it a shot. We're going to pull it off. All right. So if I say, Jason, close, will you be silent? Uh, probably because you don't have the app controls. Ah, there we go. So but if Mrs. Norbury says, Jason, close, then, yeah, they'll be closing right up. Remember, folks, automated shades provide a safer environment for children and pets due to their cordless nature. They are also programmable, and those features allow you to use heating or cooling only when you need it for maximum energy efficiency. Go see our friends at Budget Blinds, man. Right in the heart of downtown Lee Summit. Tell them Jason Nick sent you. Hello again, and welcome to Lee Summit Town Hall, a weekly podcast about what you can do to make a difference. I'm Jason Norbury, and as always, I am joined by a man who has already hired his superintendent for life. It's Nick Parker, the publisher of Link to Lee Summit. I did go through three search committees, though. Yeah, I'm sure you did. And they were, would you please love me? Would you please love me? Yes! Somebody said yes! Somebody loves me. Um, Link to Lee Summit, as always, is the source for all the news you need about our very fine city. And our unofficial sponsor today is Eating with One Hand, which, as you know, is much easier accomplished with a taco than a burger. Jason, do you know what's coming up? Do you know what is happening tomorrow? Um, it's the end of the month. Well, that's true. Am I missing something? It's Halloween. Oh, that's right. That's the whole like candy giveaway. And unfortunately, I don't know about you, but unfortunately, my son is a little upset because it's going to be cold. It is going to be cold. I, I does not seem to be deterring my children from their plans, their appointed rounds as it were, but only one of them is still of trick-or-treating age, uh, and the other one has a bonfire to go to, so he's definitely going to be at that. Well, he'll be warm. He'll be warm because he'll have the nice fire to go with it, but yeah, so it'll be interesting to see if uh, if the, the trick-or-treating is depressed by the weather. That's true, but I have my candy purchased. I've got the bowl ready, so if you come by the, the homestead, we're there. We've you, got candy. Usually, the treats I want when I come by your house are not are not candy. Gonna, <laughs> it's usually more of a uh, we'll call it a liquor variety. Well, yeah, that's 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 true. Hey, I I have one other piece of news before we dig into the topic of the day, Jason. I just want you to know, Team Taco. I I agree with you, Team Taco. I'm going to say this. I believe our friend Ben Wine, who one of the I think agitators in this whole hamburger versus taco business that I may or may not have started. I'm going to be willing to bet, and this is a pure 100% speculated and made up fact, that he, on this weekend where he was in charge of his twin boys, he fed them tacos, but not burgers. Because he knows in his heart of hearts, Team Taco. We all know the right decision to make. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, well, let's move it on, Jason. Let's get into the Lee Summit, R7 School District. You mean actual news? Actual news, Uh, a little bit of news. Fun times. The school board, they announced last week they have have come to terms with their search company, and they have even set a deadline. They announced that they hope to have a new superintendent in place. Well, hired. Hired. Announced. Announced by the end of the January of yeah. next year. So I, I want to correct myself a little bit there. I, I said in place, it actually, the position doesn't start until July 1, which is when the, the 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 calendar year starts for the school district. But they want to announce who their next superintendent will be by the end of January. Does this seem like really fast to you? I mean, I know that a lot of the stuff, they really probably do have a lot of their ducks in a row and all that. But man, I was like, I saw that date and I'm like, really? Wow. That's like way faster. I was I was expecting like... February, March-ish before we would see anything. It does, and and only because I have come to the point where I expect inefficiency. Well, and not necessarily, you know, from any specific, I just expect people to be inefficient. Oh, so you're so, just pessimistic is what you're well, saying. Well, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, yes. And I will say this, yes. I, and let's give some credit to the school board here. So um, 
this uh, raises a small bone to pick, but uh, earlier this month, the uh, the R7 has a an, a group of people, that, uh, citizens that meet. It's called the Business Roundtable. So they're the representative, I guess, of the business of various business interests in the city, and or at least in the district, and and they made a recommendation. I think it's this is a little unusual. They encouraged the school board to pull the reins back, to pause the superintendent search for reasons that weren't clear from the minutes that we see, and I didn't attend the meeting, um, so I, I don't know the like you know what all of the discussion was about. But they well, we do know that part of it from those from those those minutes and some posts that were made on social media after that meeting. We do know that there was a discussion beforehand about kind of the cultural climate, I guess, in the in the district. That I think there was a, there was it sounded like there was a discussion that people were a little a little nervous about about the district and where the district stood right now in a public light. Well, you know what, and I don't think they're necessarily wrong with this, but you you know. I think the most important thing to to provide stability or direction for a school district would be to have a an agreed upon and you know we're glad to have you here superintendent on board um, when you put that in in conjunction with the upcoming potential bond issue which we're about to get to um, a little bit that that's an out there so I thought it was a really unusual um, move and a very uh, I guess non-progressive move, and I don't mean that in a political sense, but the moving forward sense um, for the business roundtable to, to, to sort of take that stance. And, and I would commend the, the school board for kind of sticking to their plans and their timetable. And they have, a, I think, a better internal understanding of what's going on um, and where, where, they, where the district is in their capacity and readiness to make these kinds of decisions. And so good on them for not sort of kowtowing to the business interests and uh, and and keeping on their path in that regard. Well, and, and I think it's important to note that that look, every organization is going to operate better, more efficiently. We're going to use that word again, more efficiently with a leader in place. You have to have a leader, somebody at the helm steering that ship. I'm going to get cliche festival here. Oh, good. Do more. <laughs> Do more. And you know, back to what you were saying. I'm going to read between the lines a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Just to throw another one out. Um, my guess is probably that that comes a little bit from concern about the upcoming bond issue. We 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 know Jason that that the bond issue will likely be asking for a dollar figure that will be a record high in the state of Missouri. This is going to be a big ask. And I wonder if I read between the lines, I wonder if some of that is a fear of selling the bond issue after also selling what is I mean what is probably going to be a, a pretty hefty salary to a new superintendent? Uh, maybe so, but I would I, I'll take the counter to there, the contra to that argument. Oh, and I think that's effective that you do because, like I said, I'm just kind of reading between the lines right. a little bit and trying to figure out maybe a little of what people are thinking. Maybe they think that it's hard for us to in this sort of walk in chew bubble gum. Although those are um, these are very big things, not just walking. By the way, thank you for gum. keeping the cliche thing going. I am here on the cliche train with you, Nick. But I mean, I think the contra to that is. Is if the district doesn't have, I mean, look, we have been no shortage of critical of the school board in the last six to eight months um, for how they handled the the dismissal or the contract determination of resignation, Doctor Carpenter, and uh, and and that whole process, and we were very critical of the many of the words that were said and left unsaid. Um, from the school board during that whole time and the, the manner in which they handled it and all those things. We've been very, very critical of that. And and I would I would stand to have the argument if the school district can't, if the board cannot get their act together or their business together enough to hire a superintendent who will lead them in whatever direction it is that this group of elected officials has chosen, then I'm not sure how trustworthy I would feel agreeing to any sum of money as an additional bond um, to the district to deal with that and and to not have that leadership at least organized, if not in place, would be a, you know, it would potentially shake the confidence that you might have in the district. So, you know, that's the contra argument. And I guess we'll see this played out over the course of the over the course of the next six months or so as we lead into the April bond election and the the city council and school board and all the other elections that come forth. And like you said, we will be able to to see all this unfold. I, I want to you know, 
credit to the board and the district. They they are doing things very, on a very transparent level. Um, if you are in the district, you probably received or you should have received the latest from the dais email from board president Julie Doan that she sends after every meeting. And included in that was a list where you can see – all of the places that that the the job opening for superintendent have been posted, so you can see what what was posted, what requ- you know what the requirements are that they're they're looking for. I'm kind of personally disappointed. No one has reached out to me on LinkedIn about this opening for um, me to take over. Well, there's this thing called qualifications. Oh, never mind then. Ah. and to kind of again go back to what you and I always always call for is for people to to make their voices heard to get involved so the district is opening up uh, there are going to be several chances for for people who live in the district to make their voices heard in the next couple of weeks to be sure i mean so this is like in the next 2 weeks so those of you listening today you know share this with your friends get out there pay attention there are there is one on November 12th at Lee Summit High School November 13th at Lee Summit North November fourteenth um, will be two of them: one in the morning, or in the over in the morning at the Innovation Campus, and one in the ap- evening at Lee Summit West. So they're they're covering the whole district, all the big buildings where they can hold these kinds of events. But you have an opportunity to go in, voice your concerns, voice your issues, the things you want the district to focus on. Um, you know, I would make the suggestion, um, given where we've been in the last six to eight months, that you you hold the district's feet to the fire on the equity issue and make sure that. The superintendent that they're hiring has the capacities to to help lead that process to a, a healthy conclusion. And, and a little side note on that, Jason, um, you will you will note that if you've if you've seen some of the, the the releases from the district, they they are digging in now and they're doing some of that equity training that they they hired the firm to to do. So so that is ongoing, and and I think you know it is we've, we we incumbent you and I probably need to, to to ask some questions on that and dig in and see how things are going and we will we will do that that being said I think it's important to to go to these four sessions at least one of these four sessions and and even if you don't have anything that you want to say although we encourage everyone to to make their voice and their opinion heard it's a great time to listen to and I think to get a feel for what people in the district are thinking and how they're feeling, and then also how how do the school board and the other administrators how do they respond to those questions? Yeah, absolutely. how do how do they interact with people who are voicing concerns, who are voicing opinions? And I think that that's important, and 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 I think it will be important that the leader that they bring in, the next superintendent that they bring in, that that person has a a skill set that allows them to interact with. Not just not just the school board, but with business leaders, with community stakeholders, and with with the community at large. I think we we have seen that people want to be heard, and that you can't just carry on these conversations in a closed door meeting. And and you know, I also would want to say that if, you know, if you want to get like a preview of what some of these who may be running for re-election or election in the. Uh, in the upcoming election, this may be an early opportunity to kind of see where they are when they're not in campaign season. Um, that, That's that, fast approaching. That is fast approaching. And so you might hear those tones change once filing starts for those who are filing for reelection. So just, you know, I get an opportunity to get in and hear a little bit, maybe a little bit less filtered uh, voices from the school district. So this is your opportunity, folks, to get out in the next couple of weeks, 12th, 13th, and 14th. you got four different opportunities to go, some in the evening, some in the morning, one in the evening or early evening. Get out there, give your voice. You know, this is one of those things that you can do to make a difference. To go back to my tagline that I read every week, um, and and have your your voice heard and and have an influence on on the decisions that they make come January. Boy, you started out this conversation, Jason, asking me if it seemed fast that they were going to try to make that announcement at the end of January. How about this? Seems fast. It's November. <sighs> It's it is November, and then you look ahead because last night, Jason, the chamber had a special event, a so maybe you want to run for public office event where they had people come in and, and listen to a panel and ask questions about what it's like and what it takes to to run for public office, and then if you win to to, to serve in public office, that's a reminder that in December is filing for not only city council seats but school board seats. There's gonna there are gonna be more elections coming up in the spring, so all of that stuff is coming pretty quickly, and it all ties into these conversations we're having about our district. So so be involved, go ask your questions. This is the chance to do it, especially now before December comes and it is the start of silly season, and that's just no good for anybody. But we're gonna be there. 
this very po- Lee Simon Town Hall podcast will be there to cover the election and that whole process leading up to city council, school board, and school board or R seven bond issue questions. We'll we'll be diving in, getting all that good stuff, trying to find out what where things are, and and we'll keep a we'll keep our finger on the pulse of the superintendent search. And if there's anything that's worth saying, we're going to say it. And I want to just just one more time. It, it's, maybe you don't like asking your questions. Maybe you don't feel comfortable doing it. Let us know what your questions are. Let us know the topics you want us to talk about. Let us know the questions you want us to be asking about the superintendent search. Maybe the questions you want us to be asking candidates as that season approaches. We'll get there. We'll ask those questions for you if you want. We'll have those conversations. So let us know. You can find us on Facebook at Link to Lee Summit, on Twitter at LS Town Hall. You can email me, Nick, at linktoleesummit.com. You, you can email me at bill.baird at city of Lee Summit Dallas. <laughs> That was a funny way of, yes, email email your mayor, email your city council people. And by the way, Jason, I, I think the good mayor is going to have some words with you later. Uh, they wouldn't be the first. <laughs> Jason, I think that's going to wrap up. It's a, it's a short show this week, but I, it was important, I think, that we, we kind of dove in a little bit on the superintendent search and let everybody know kind of the timeline of what's happening and that they've got a chance. You've got a chance to come in and be a part of the process right here, right now. We will talk to everybody next time. Team Taco. Jason, today's episode of the Lee Summit Town Hall podcast is brought to the people by Shred KC. Shred KC! Hey, there's a reason we pick the people that we do to partner with, to be sponsors. Is it because they'll pay us? Well, that. Yeah, I mean, that's always a good thing. But it's because they're good, community-minded people. It is the advantage of doing, I think, a very local podcast is that we get good local sponsors and supporters of our show. And we we can know them in a way that, like, we can't know the, the, you know, the big ads or the mattresses or the websites or the ED pills or the razors or whatever they're selling on the big podcast. So instead of a commercial this time, I just want to tell a story. So I got a call from Ryan Waters. Story time. I know you love story time. I do love Nick. story time. I got a call from Ryan, Wa- Ryan Waters last week. Ryan is the owner of Shred. He has the Shred podcast as well. And he called me down to his office. And he says, I want to tell you about a few things I've got going on. And then he rattles off this list. And it includes, for for this week, the end of October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness so Month. Hurry up and get in on this deal now. Which you know is d- near and dear to my heart. It is. They are raising money for breast cancer awareness and actually for someone in their gym, a special friend. All money donated. Ryan is matching. And I know for a fact that as as of Monday morning, that was nearing $1,000 already. Then, later in November, they are going to do a project with the uh, it's uh, the Veterans Project. Give, Veter- me the, give the name. Veterans Community Project. Veterans Community Project, you know it as the the Tiny House Project. Uh, later in November, they are going to be working with harvesters. And then after that, they're going to do some coat drives for Hillcrest. He's got another live shred education event coming up in, on December 12th here at Bridge Space. And that will include a toy drive. And all proceeds from tickets are going to go to charity as well. So he has decided that for the rest of this year, he's going to give back to this community. That is a pretty- Right here our community and that that is a fantastic thing to hear that that one local business owner has said hey for the rest of the year i'm focusing on my community and giving back to some people who need help so there you go not only is ryan going to provide a a really good atmosphere for you to go in and make the improvements in your health that you want to make but he's also out there doing that good egg stuff that we like to talk about where he's making a difference in the community more than just the one person at a time. But now he's giving giving back to give it to the whole community. So before I sign off with our call to action for the listeners, let's give out one Lee Summit Town Hall good on you to Ryan Waters and the folks at Shred KC. Good on you. And if you're looking to uh, change, to live the healthy lifestyle, these are the people to go see. Go see them right in the heart of Lee Summit. Shred KC. Tell them Jason and Nick say You have been listening to Lee Summit Town Hall, a link to Lee Summit podcast with hosts Nick Parker and Jason Norberry. 
A proud member of the Fredcast Network, you can subscribe to this podcast on most of your favorite podcast apps and catch us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for all the news, analysis, and conversations on the Lee Summit community. Connect with us on Facebook at Link2LeeSummit or on Twitter at LS Town Hall. <laughs>